In the world of the future, humanity undertakes regular expeditions to Mars. Four astronauts are preparing for a new mission on the Red Planet and are hosting a farewell party with their loved ones. Experienced astronaut Jim McConnell arrives to meet his friends, and together they reminisce about their past expedition. Unfortunately, Jim's beloved partner passed away after a long and difficult illness, which led him to leave the group of astronauts. As a result, his close friend Luke will join the next expedition. Luke feels guilty towards Jim, but Jim is confident that his partner will excel in the mission. Thirteen months pass, and the new expedition lands on Mars. Using a rover, the astronauts unexpectedly discover a mystical geological formation in the northern hemisphere of Mars, resembling ice deposits. They report this to the command center aboard the International Space Station and decide to explore the location themselves. Meanwhile, the rover picks up strange sounds, initially mistaken for radio interference. The astronauts reach the cliff and decide to scan the peculiar formation on top. Suddenly, their equipment malfunctions, and a powerful whirlwind emerges above the cliff. In the next moment, it transforms into a giant worm-like creature that ruthlessly destroys three crew members. After the dust settles from the whirlwind, it is revealed that beneath the soil of the cliff, a sculpture resembling a Martian face is buried. Back at the command center, they are still unaware of what has happened to the expedition. Astronaut couple Woody and Terry flirt playfully with each other, making plans for their future return home. Suddenly, they are summoned to an emergency meeting, where they are informed that a catastrophic energy eruption has occurred on Mars, destroying almost all equipment on board the spacecraft. The team opens a brief video message received from the repair module in Mars orbit. In the message, the injured Luke panics as he recounts an unknown force that broke free from the mountain and annihilated all the expedition members. The recording cuts off, leaving the ground command with more questions than answers. Luke's friends persuade the leadership to send another expedition to Mars to investigate what happened and save the sole survivor. Despite the doubts of the management, Woody insists on including Jim in the rescue team. Despite his long hiatus, Jim is a professional in his field and knows everything about Mars. It has been 173 days since the rescue ship set off towards the Red Planet. The new expedition team consists of Commander Woody, his wife and geologist Terry, co-pilot Jim, and technician Phil. The commander anxiously discovers a dust storm that has already engulfed half of the Martian hemisphere. If they don't hurry, it will cover the entire planet for a whole year. Nevertheless, the friends remain positive and have a dance party in zero gravity. As they approach Mars, they receive satellite footage showing the planet's surface. Upon zooming in, they don't notice any traces of Luke, but they are surprised to see that the previous expedition camp and their spacecraft remain undamaged. They also receive a recording of a powerful electromagnetic discharge emanating from Mars. The images are transmitted to the ground control. After reviewing them, the team is granted permission to land on Mars for a reconnaissance mission. Jim sadly watches a video of his beloved. For many years, they had been preparing for the Mars landing, but now only he can fulfill their cherished dream. Woody enters the cabin and expresses concern about what is happening on the Red Planet. The friends conclude that an unknown force may be the cause of everything. Jim's spouse also believed that something significant was hidden on Mars, so he is eager to solve the mystery of the Red Planet. As the crew prepares to enter Mars orbit, their spacecraft unexpectedly encounters a meteor shower. Small fragments penetrate the hull, injuring Phil's arm. Due to the resulting malfunctions, the main system detects an air leak, and the pressure inside the ship rapidly decreases. Woody quickly seals one of the breaches, but the pressure continues to drop. They switch the ship to autonomous power mode, and the commander decides to go outside to patch up the holes on the aircraft's surface. Phil suggests disabling artificial gravity inside the ship to reboot the system. In the chaos, Jim fails to put on a spare helmet with oxygen and begins to suffocate. Nonetheless, using a liquid, he determines the location of the breach in the sector and directs Woody there. Immediately after, Jim loses consciousness due to oxygen deprivation, but Woody and Phil manage to repair the hull and restore fuel supply to the spacecraft just in time. The team breathes a sigh of relief, but a new problem awaits them. A fuel leak triggers an engine explosion, propelling it into space. If they re-enter the atmosphere, all crew members will be incinerated along with the spacecraft. The astronauts make a desperate decision. They must dock with a supply module from the previous expedition to utilize their engine. Clutching onto a rope, the crew ventures into open space, only to find that the module is orbiting at a low altitude for them. Jim suggests using a harpoon, but Woody deems the plan too risky. Instead, Woody takes it upon himself to head towards the module, which continues to move at a significant speed. Along the way, his rocket pack runs out of fuel, and he switches to autonomous mode. Eventually, Woody successfully reaches the module and secures a tether that will allow the rest of the crew to enter. However, he accidentally slips off himself. 
Unable to return to the module on his own, he continues to fall towards Mars. The shock team prepares to come to his aid, but Woody forbids them from doing so due to the lack of fuel. Terry, desperate to save her husband, shoots a tether in his direction, but it falls short. Their last hope for rescue is shattered. Realizing that his beloved wife is wasting time and fuel in vain, Woody sacrifices himself by removing his helmet. Terry cries as she watches her spouse's lifeless body, but eventually gathers the strength to return to the team. The trio of survivors manages to land successfully on Mars, but their module will no longer be able to take off. Therefore, the astronauts take new navigation panels with them to install on the spacecraft from the previous expedition. Upon arrival at the base camp, they discover that their spaceship is intact, but all the computers are malfunctioning. Jim enters the greenhouse and is surprised to find that everything inside is still functioning. He removes his helmet to breathe the air from the plants when suddenly, a silhouette of Luke appears behind him. The deranged astronaut attacks Jim, mistaking him for a figment of his imagination. Eventually, Jim manages to calm Luke down and convinces him that he and the other astronauts are real and have come to rescue him. Regaining his senses, Luke tells his friends that he managed to sustain himself in the greenhouse, obtaining oxygen and food from the plants. Worried about what transpired, the astronauts ask him about the fate of the previous expedition. Luke begins to recount a convoluted tale about an unknown creature that emerged from the rocks and destroyed his companions. He believes that the creature deliberately spared him to share this secret with the world. Rescuers come to the conclusion that their friend has started to lose his mind due to the prolonged stay on Mars, far away from civilization. Luke shows them makeshift graves from the previous expedition and says that he was only able to find the body of one person. Later, to prove to his friends that he hasn't gone crazy, he shows them a recording taken before the explosion. At the top of the mountain, a geological formation resembling a sculpture of a face is visible. Luke is convinced that it was left there by someone long before expeditions were sent to Mars. For the past few months on Mars, Luke has been studying this discovery and managed to capture strange sounds emanating from the sculpture. After analyzing them, the astronaut concluded that they represent a diagram of human DNA on a rectangular coordinate system in space. Over time, Jim realizes that the diagram is incomplete. Alien beings deliberately sent mysterious signals in the form of a request, hoping that humans could complete the DNA scheme. This explains why the first expedition perished. Due to the astronauts' ignorance, they misinterpreted the signals from the extraterrestrials and struck the sculpture with a radar beam. An unknown force perceived it as an invasion and activated a defensive complex, destroying the uninvited guests. Inspired, Jim suggests to the team to record a new message to the alien beings, transmitting the missing part of the DNA diagram through sound. However, his friends don't share his enthusiasm and are afraid to take the risk. The astronaut insists, explaining that the sacrifices of the previous expedition and Woody's effort should not be in vain. The team sends a rover to the sculpture and transmits the required signal through it. Contrary to their fears, the alien forces accept their response, and a passage appears in the face. Everyone, except Phil, who must fix the ship, goes to the sculpture and enters inside. When they enter the bright white room, the passage behind them abruptly closes, and communication with Phil is lost. Jim discovers that the space around them is filled with breathable air and removes his protective helmet. Astonished, the friends follow suit, trying to understand where they have ended up. Suddenly, another passage opens before them, leading to a dark room where a three-dimensional projection of the solar system activates. Before them appears a hologram of a Martian, which silently shows the guests about the history of the universe. Long ago, the Martian ecosystem resembled Earth's, but it was struck by a massive asteroid that completely destroyed life on the planet. Martians had to evacuate their race to neighboring planets and galaxies, and one of their spacecrafts set off for Earth. After many years, new life forms formed from the Martian DNA that was sent evolved and became humans. According to the plan of the alien beings, humans were meant to return to the red planet so that the sculpture could recognize in them the descendants of its great experiment. The Martian hologram disappears, and Jim realizes that they are near another spaceship, ready to take them to their creators. Phil manages to briefly establish contact with the team and orders them to return immediately before their ship is engulfed by a sandstorm. Luke and Terry are ready to go, but Jim decides to stay. He intends to meet the Martians and learn more about the creation of their civilization. The friends accept Jim's choice and bid him farewell forever. Due to the sandstorm that has begun, the two remaining astronauts struggle to reach their ship. Fortunately, Phil disobeys the order and delays takeoff, waiting for his companions. Meanwhile, Jim's spacecraft fills with liquid, and he is surprised to discover that he can breathe underwater. Memories from his earthly life emerge before his eyes, and he smiles happily. As the astronauts launch into space, the crew watches through the window as Jim's Martian ship swiftly moves away into a distant galaxy. They are happy for their friend, 
who will finally fulfill what they dreamed of with their loved one.